Hey guys, welcome to that 135th scale show. Today we're back in 135th scale and we're going to be talking about the US World War II M24 Chaffee light tanks from AFV Club. But before I jump into this box, let's check out the real thing that they have at Camp Mabry. So I'm really excited about this kit. Uh, number one, it's U.S. Uh, doing a lot of German stuff uh, prior to this. Uh, the Hetzer was kind of daunting after a while. And I have some exciting ideas for this. But before I start the build, I want to share it with you guys. And uh, so we have some great box art here from AFV Club. Uh, apparently there's a lot of stuff in this box. So I'm going to show off some of the box here. Let's see if it's in focus. Yeah, it's all good in focus. And the, uh, I have some things in mind with this. Um, let me check it out here. And the kit number, if you want to know, is AF35054. And I believe this just came out in 2014. And they had a, a, a later version come out. I know that they have on, out on the market. It's Indonesian uh, version. And this is the, the World War II one. And I've been doing some research into it, and I wish I had known uh, about this, but these were actually first used in the Battle of the Bulge um, as far as World War II went. They got sent over uh, in late 44, and the first battle they encountered was in the Ardennes. So uh, that was a pretty cool bit of information. Uh, this is a bonus kit, like I said. They brought it to my attention because it does come with a resin figure, so let's get in here. So I haven't gone through and opened everything so we get to do all that on the show today um first thing off out the box is the instruction booklet has a little bit of history on there how it developed uh from the idea of the m3s m5s which i think was was that the stewards i think that was the stewards and uh they needed a light tank the tank was developed by cadillac and uh so that's another bit of cool information get this out of frame here or kind of out of frame it's off to the side and we'll start here with the instruction booklet before we start jumping into the sprues so yeah they have a little bit of history there for you and uh this is kind of cool and if you you know like me and you don't really know what you want to do with the kit yet they have a lot of different samples in here um of different variations so you have the m19 you know gun mortar carriage you have a bulldozer version a howitzer version so yeah this the lower hull on this was developed into a lot of different vehicles. Uh, I believe this, uh, they have the color list here. They have it for a hobby color, Mr. Color, Mr. Color Spray, Humbrol, Revel, and Life Color. Never for Vallejo, which is primarily what I use to me in Vallejo. But uh, in any case, uh, like, yeah, so we're getting in here the first bit. You're starting out with the lower hull, which is pretty much already built for you. And you start breaking into that suspension and let's see here yep this does have a working this does have a working suspension which is always kind of a tedious part with afv club but once you my experience is once you get past the uh the suspension it becomes a lot more fun you've been doing uh an afv club right andrew yes i have yeah and his suspension was a bitch uh yes sir. yeah that's what i thought you were thinking is your t34 is that yes. what yeah okay How's that coming? Where you at with that? Um, it is currently on the shelf, getting some rest time. <laughs> okay. Frustration levels. Are yeah. High. Well, good news about this this Chaffee version. It doesn't look as complicated as the Eight Rad or the Churchill. 
I'm not seeing any springs here. And sometimes that's that's getting those to set in without you know without using super glue or something to keep them working. Uh, it's pretty good. So yeah, it actually the lower hole looks like it's going to build pretty fast. Just this first six steps here look to be pretty complicated. Man, these kits are so over engineered though. There's a lot of work on the on the road wheels here. And uh, but you know with all the details, I, th I, th I don't think they overworked. Oh, this is nice. So they actually have. Uh, this, that's a, a real photo here of the hatch latches. That's cool. And uh, yeah, there's no interior on this one. That was probably to save a little bit on the on the price of the kit. And it looks like we're gonna have rubber band tracks. Yep, rubber band tracks. Check those out in a minute. That's exciting for me. I like rubber band tracks. And I've actually I went through these instructions and I put some notes in here and wrote some things down that I'm not gonna put the side skirts on. Uh, every time I've seen uh, a Chaffee in photographs or at the museum, it's never had the side skirts on. So I'm probably not going to put those on. And uh, yeah, so the barrel construction, it's a metal barrel. That's cool. So we're not going to have to worry about any seams really on the barrel. And yeah. Yeah, this is all looking really good. Turret looks really detailed. That's awesome. Okay. So there's a look at the instructions. How many steps are in this all together? So you got 29 steps. That's a lot of steps. But I think it will all be worth it in the end. Uh, then you have at the back of the book, you have uh, your parts list, sprue counts, and your, uh, if you're like me and sometimes mess up a part, lose it to the carpet monster, you can replace them. And then you have markings for the 81st Reconnaissance Squadron, 1st Armored Division, Italy, 1945. Uh, that's cool. I, I, I was actually in 1st Armored Division, so and it's very rare that I see 1st Armored Division uh, represented, so that's cool. You get 36 Tank Battalion of the 8th Armored Division in Rheinberg, uh, Germany, March 1945. And they're all calling for olive drab, I believe. Uh, 36 Tank Battalion, 8th Armored Division in Rheinberg, Germany, March 1945. Uh, that's olive drab 2. And... Uh, same thing with the 2nd Armored Cavalry Group, which these light tanks were actually used a lot for cal for cab, and that's all real good. So yeah, we got some cool markings there. Probably, I'm, I'm real tempted to either go British, because through the Lend-Lease, the British did have some chaffies, but I have another uh, project back behind me that uh, I haven't started yet, and I'm thinking about going British with that. But uh, uh, yeah, this is really exciting. It looks really Really good. Let's look at the instructions. Let's just dive into the kit here. All right, starting off with the resin figure. He comes in this clear baggie. Dump him out. And this is a cool figure. Uh, said it's resin. I'm not sure who the the sculpt sculptor is on it. Um, but the mold lines look really good. He's got a trench coat on. This is kind of rare for US. Uh, there's some flash and there's actually some injection points here that need to be cut off. And it appears to be, okay, those are buttons, not bubbles. Looks like so there are some bubbles on this side though. But you can sand those off. Uh, the head, he's wearing the US uh, tanker helmet and a pair of goggles there. So he's all raring to go. You know, and you know, I have some ideas in my head about this. We'll we'll see, we'll see how they pan out. And he's got arms, so he's rocking the 50 cal up on top of the turret, and that's kind of cool. His arms are all spread out, and there's some resin flash on here, but that's going to be easily removed with a few strokes of the hobby knife. But it looks pretty good. It's not an alpine figure. It's looks more Verlinden than anything, in my opinion. Um, also, the yellow resin. Not really. I don't think I'm a real fan of resin, resin, resin. But the head is really good. He's got straps on the helmet, uh, and we don't have a lot of resin tanker helmets. I think I've had one set from Alpine that that I used from a, a task of Sherman that I've had tanker helmets. All right, so let's keep going through here. All right, here we got a string for our our tow hooks, and we got two pieces of photo etch. And I'm not going to open these. I'm just kind of going to leave them against the white here. Kind of getting separated. So I don't want to get them bent up. But uh, yeah, so we have some 
Uh, all nice. It has a, a turret basket, or at least the, the basket might go on the back hole. So it looks like we have some turret baskets. And then you have some pieces of the lower hole here. Looks like a 50 cal handle. And uh, some of the, um, the fender supports. And a couple other bits in there, a strap. Some good looking photo etch. And then I guess the, we got all the decals, of course, and can't really see them because I got a clear cut on it. Oh, screw it. Let's go ahead and open it. I said I wasn't going to. I don't have to take the photo etch out, though. All right, there we go. It's got that slip cover over there. I want to see these decals. Oh, shoot. They're not going to stay. They're not going to stand out at all. But yeah, they actually look pretty good. Uh, there's a little bit of edge on the on the sides there. Uh, we'll see how they turn out. But everything there is looking good. Let's just start up here. Here we got two pieces of sprue and the metal barrel with the spring on it. I wonder if the barrel's movable. I'm just gonna kind of jump through here. So let's see here. The metal barrel looks great, actually. And I'm not sure what these are yet. These are probably pieces of the suspension, these brass tubes. I'll have to look back at the instruction sheet. But yeah, there's some brass tubing here and then the barrel. And there's actually a thin pin here. I didn't see where that's going, but there's two thin pins. Very, very thin pins. So there's some metal work on this kit. That's pretty exciting. Never, like I've only think I've done maybe one metal barrel. I think it was on the Church Hill. And uh, does your T34 come with a metal barrel? Yes, it does. All right, nice. So that might be a typical thing with AFV clubs. I guess this is only my, my third one. I haven't even finished the second one that I've started last year. All right, here we got our Pioneer tools. And it uh, looks like these are basket supports for the rear hole, I believe. And there's a little bit of flash, but not too much. And once again, like I don't know where these are at right now on the kit, whether they're going to be within view or not. But the plastic seems pretty thin on these pieces. I think this is a, a breech pipette or whatever they call it. That's right there. And I'll just put these down here in the bunk. I got some Pioneer tools here. There's a lot of flash on that shovel. Uh, and there's, yeah, there's actually quite a bit of flash on these. So that's not very friendly to me. There's going to be some cleanup and some sanding on those. But um, yeah, the axe handle looks great. I believe that's what that is. So, but everything else has a bit of flash on it. Wow. All right. Let's keep diving through here. Get that open there. This is the lower hole. And it's very, very thin. You're gonna have to be kind of delicate with handling this. Like this front, it's just the lower deck here on the hull. And there's, once again, there's flash to be spotted there. I think we're kind of at a point now where I think with this kit, you shouldn't be seeing this much flash, but there's a lot of great sharp details here with the, uh, then the supports. And uh, here's some stuff I don't like. I guess this, I'm gonna have to wash this a little bit. I don't know if this is like, from the the release, the mold release or what, but there's a few injection mold points. Man, I'm getting kind of pissed off here. Come on, AFV Club. <laughs> oh, this doesn't look good at all. There's gonna be some sanding. I, it doesn't. I don't guess it doesn't matter on the lower hole. This is gonna be down on the ground, but I should expect a lot more. Oh, that kind of makes me mad. Anyways. Ah. Uh. I was all excited about this kit, and now I'm getting kind of mad about it. But we're going to keep going through. There's so much stuff. Like, I'm looking here at the sprues, and I didn't think it was going to be a whole lot. There's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff in here. Yeah, here we're looking at the uh, skirts. And, okay, here I'm not seeing any flash, and I'm just seeing really sharp details. All right, so now we're seeing some positiveness around this kit. Um, man. Yeah. Okay. So I'm seeing some in here. So if right here on the on the rear deck, 
uh, your exhaust system there's some flash in between the in between the uh, grates here so that's going to be scraped out uh, what else here Let's see there's some ejection points yeah there's some ejection mold points but not on the top and that's good so yep and I'm seeing more flash but I don't think I'm using these side scrape covers so yeah that's the the hole has some sharp details and no flash a uh, little bit of flash within the back deck here or the rear deck and everything else seems to be very clean uh, other than injection points and a couple of prote uh, protection uh, tabs to keep them from getting bent up in the box all right let's crack on as things with the the British say okay at least it's not that noisy plastic. There's like, like Bronco kits always have this like annoying plastic. It's like ah, rah, 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 rah. tape. All right. Let's see. And here we're gonna have the turret pieces. And here we go. Looking good on the turret. Uh, well, shit. Spoke too soon. A lot of flash here, right behind where the barrel sets. So like the front of the turret. Um. I expected a lot more from AFV Club, in all honesty. Like, there's going to be a lot of cleanup here. It'll it'll be worth it. And I'm kind of degrading the kit here a little bit. I don't want to do that, but uh, yeah, I just expect a lot more. I've ne like I've never seen this much flash on AFV. Uh, all right. So here the the turret looks pretty clean. Uh, there's some ejection point there, but that's on the tab you cut off. At least uh, that's good. Well, this kit was made in 2013. So this is probably part of the Indonesian kit. If so, it's probably just a retool. Uh, yeah, everything's looking good. There's actually some good weld seams on here. So try not to lose those in the paint. We want those weld seams in there. And So yeah. So this is looking good. There's no flash whatsoever on the turret, but right here on the front, on the gun, or basically on the, on the front of the breech, I guess where the breech would be, uh, you're seeing some flash, and where else did I see some flash? I just saw it on here. All right, right here. So on this piece, there's a lot of flash. And it's gonna have to all be scratched off. Also on the storage compartment, there's some flash as well. All right, I expect more AFV Club, but I'm still excited. I'm not losing hope. All right, so continuing on here, uh, and I found more power. Uh, we've got more Pioneer tools here, and these don't really have much flash on them. Uh, there's a little bit here and there. Uh, we also have our tow hooks here, and some more Pioneer tools. Actually, there's some really great detail here on this one here. There's a little bit of flash, but not too much. And I guess this is, this is a bipod with a cover for the 50 cal. That's a really cool detail. So this is some cool stuff. Uh, this is a retool, I guess, or a re... So it's 2005, so I guess this is, you know, something they kind of threw in the kit. But, uh, yeah. So there's a whole different set of Pioneer tools. And I guess these are just recycled from another, from another AFV club kit. But these tools actually look pretty good. Uh... And now we're gonna look at the road wheels. Now oh, we're almost we're almost out of box. Let's look at these road wheels because the road wheels, as we saw in the instruction booklet, are pretty over engineered for road wheels. Half the time we cover them with mud and whatnot, so get that off the table. Put this on here. here so let's look at these road wheels actually okay road wheels are looking good and that is pleasing me because with all the work that's going to go into putting these wheels together it would have pissed me off to have to clean them up too much but yeah i'm totally satisfied with these now on the sprockets it's a little annoying they got two connecting points to the sprue plus the protection tab so that's a lot of work there but yeah uh oh shit 
There's one of my grab handles are broken out of the box. Sweet. Gotta love that. But, uh, yeah, we'll get through it. Actually, you know what? There is a flash on these damn red wheels. I just saw it through the light. This is real thin. Uh, that'll be easy to take care of. Just run the hobby knife backwards through it. Yeah. All the details are really crisp. That's for sure. Yeah, they look pretty good. All right, let's get this stuff out of here. And what do we got here? This is, uh, I got two, three more sprees left. That's a lot of stuff in this box. Oh, okay, here we go. This is another 50 cal. And, or no. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, it's 50 cal. I was going to make sure it wasn't a 30. Let's say, and we've got a couple different barrel options here. Cool. So this is all looking pretty good. Not too much flash. Got the basket. Show that ammo. And looks like the, the Coppola to hold it. So this all looks pretty good. A little bit of flash on the barrels, but that's nothing. Yeah, nothing compared to what's on the rest of the kit. These are actually looking really good. And see, I wonder if there's a date on this when this one was printed. Nope. Clear parts here. Nice. All right, so here we have our windows and our periscopes. The lights, and that's all looking pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the turret. The turret looks really good for clear. It'll paint. Uh, only thing that's going to kind of suck is cleaning up these windows. But I did that with the, uh, the Task of Sherman, I think. Or was it the Dragon? It was one of the two. It was either the Task or the Dragon where I did this on the turret. I ended up painting them, but I'll try to leave these clear. It's always a, a daunting task, but... I'll get after it. All right. So clear parts. Got one more bit of, okay, here we got 30 cows. Trying to stab myself with the, yeah, so this is your bow gun. Uh, and it's 30 calibers. Where was this printed? It doesn't say. It's got the AFV club logo on there, but no print date. And uh, so yeah, this is all looking pretty sharp. There's no flash whatsoever. So these 30 cows that you're going to be using in the bow gun uh, are all looking really good. As far as the bow gun goes, it looks good. It looks pretty solid. Actually, it looks like the real deal. And there's holes in the front. There we go. So it's not all flat. Yeah. So the bow gun looks great, even though you're only going to see a part of it. And our rubber tracks. And I know a lot of people aren't fans of rubber band tracks, but man, I just love the ease of them. Just paint them. Mud them, mud them up. It's pretty freaking easy. And you know what? There's no flash on the rubber band tracks. Heck yeah. But they're already separated from the sprue nearly for me. So yeah, they look they look pretty good. Nice, quick, easy tracks. That's a lot more exciting than the the part tracks or the sprue tracks that I've been dealing with as of late. And then the creme de la creme last thing in the box. Is a nice little poster for your wall. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Thanks, AFV Club, for another poster. That's going to sit somewhere on a table somewhere until I decide. Maybe I'll put it up. Maybe I won't. That's some nice artwork. So, yeah. Well, okay. So, final thoughts on this, uh, on this AFV Club Chaffee. I'm really disappointed in the Flash. Uh, AFV Club is known... Uh, I think for their complicated suspensions, uh, we Andrew here has concurred that his T thirty four was over engineered. The the cha the the Chaffee looks over engineered to a point, not nearly as over engineered as the eight rad or the Churchill that I previously worked on. But I am a little bit disappointed in the flash. High points of the kit uh, is definitely the photo etch and the um, metal barrel uh, and the resin figure. Those are all great things, but like I said, for the price point of the kit and for you know the the suspension of getting through the build, uh, getting past that point, it's going to be difficult. Um, so I would recommend this for advanced modelers, and 
I don't even consider myself an advanced modeler. I consider myself maybe slightly intermediate. Um, I still hit a lot of uh, stopping points at this point. But, um, yeah, uh, the details are great. I'm just a little, like I said, I'm just a little disappointed on the fly. And so with that said, um, I'll keep you guys updated on how the build goes and uh, any problems that could occur uh, besides the cleanup of the kit. And, uh, yeah, thanks for, for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.